Today we are going to learn about behavior psychology. So I'm Leon from Korea and I'm 23 years old and I'm interested in psychology, so I choose this subject. So can you introduce yourself briefly? Okay. Yeah, yeah um, my name is uh, TC and um, I'm a teacher here at MTC. Okay. Okay, this is today's order. order. We're going to learn basic concepts of behavior cycles and how to get information from our face. And next, how to read upper body language and of course, how to read lower body language. So we have to know what is behavior cycles. Have you heard about it before, about behavior cycles? Is there anyone? Yeah, some of you guys already know about this stuff, but not really. So you have to learn today. Behavior psychology means non-verbal communication. It means we don't need to speak for reading someone's mind. All we have to do is analyzing their behavior based on behavior language. What can be behavior psychology? Reaction, action, and touch and our regular, po regular condition, posture, and even our clothes can be behavior cycles. Because if we like someone, we tend to care about our clothes. But if we don't like, we don't care about our clothes. It means our clothes reflect our attitude or our mind. And then we have to know history of behavior cycles. Because uh, when we want to learn something, we have to know history first. An American psychologist, John Watson, uh, made his theory about behavior psychology. He really wanted to know how behavior psychology, body language, and our thinking are related. And he figured out uh, our feeling, our feeling is really close to behavior language body language. We're going to watch some video about FBI interrogation. But before, before that time, we had to know how to figure out telling a lie from their body language. There are many behaviors. First, uh, whenever we tell a lie, our pupils become big. It's a kind of instinctive reaction. It is really easy to catch from people, person who has blue eyes or brown eyes, but it is really hard to catch, catch uh, from person who has dark eyes. So if you want to observe a person who has dark eyes, you have to concentrate, concentrate on more. And we tend to blink our eyes frequently because we want to hide our pupil, pupil movement. That's why we tend to blink our eyes. Often. And we swallow our saliva frequently. You can catch easily if you look at their throat, but don't be pervert. Do not, do not look at for a long time. And some people uh, tend to tremble their hands whenever they, they uh, tell a lie. Uh, but you, have to be, you guys have to be careful. Some, of, some people have a habit, uh, ha have a disease named hand trembler. So you have to distinguish that before you observe their behavior. 
And some people tend to tremble their legs. Yeah, you guys also have to be careful because a lot of people have a habit that they tremble their legs when they're nervous or, or something. And one more thing. Some people touch their nose frequently because they want to hide their mouth. And it's a, it, it, it is also instinctive reaction. So we're going to watch FBI interrogation videos. So I'm going to give you a paper. And you have to figure out one, one, one guy has a guilty and one guy is innocent. You guys have to figure out which guy has a guilty and which guy is innocent. Person one, guilty or innocent and reason. And person two, guilty or innocent and reason. Like that. You can write like that. Can you pass it? Is there anyone who has a pen? Maybe let's go. No, no, I had it. Is there any people now? Okay, ready? Did you guys figure it out? I couldn't see. I couldn't see you guys didn't write something. I, I saw that, right? 
is, uh, is there anyone is there anyone who think person A has a guilty? Please raise your hand. Person A has a guilty. And person B has a guilty. Yes. Yes, she's right. Person A has a guilty. He killed his dad. And person B is innocent. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can find that through their behavior, behavior language. Uh, person A did like that. He, he, closed, uh, he has closed mind. And, and he trembled his body when, when, whenever he said, I didn't do anything. And person B was so confident about, about his guilty. He thought, I'm clean, so I'm, okay. I'm going to be OK. So he, yeah. So you guys are wrong. You, have to, you guys have to study a lot. Of course, reading someone's mind is important. But straightening up, someone's, uh, straightening up our body posture is also really important. So why don't we prepare for that? Why don't we prepare for some situation, some awkward and nervous situation like an interview? Okay, I'm going to be an interviewer, and uh, you guys are going to be uh, interviewees. So is there anyone who want to enter a company soon? Volunteer, please. Just, I'm going to interview guys, just one people. Thank you. Okay. Hi. I'm going to interview you from now. Okay. Hi. Where are you from? Why did you apply this company? This company? Yes. His posture was not bad, but he did like that. He bent his back and he put his hands over, over, around his stomach. Uh, he shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, the best, best posture is put your hands, your knees like that, and straighten up your back and uh, raise your chins up. And always answer with smiley face like that. But you didn't smile. Uh, but yeah, I would give great B. But your your hand hand shaking was good. Yes. Yeah, this is man's uh, best posture for an interview. I showed you guys before. And this is woman's best posture. Straight up, straight up your back, and stack your hands and put your hands on your knees a little bit over your knees and put your legs together and always answer with smiley face. That's the best. There are some rules for behavioral language. First, make a habit of observation. We all have our own habit. So we have to observe that before we analyze someone's feeling, thinking. Because or not, we will be confused. Second, remember unchangeable body language. Uh, there are some unchangeable body language like pupil movement or hand shaking, so we have to remember that. And understand behavior, behaviors in specific situations. Uh, some people behave in different ways in different situations. For example, if I go to a club, I will be active and I will dance. But if I stand in front of the interviewers, I will be calmed down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have to be careful. And remember a regular form. I mean, uh, we have to remember someone's regular posture. And then 
it will be easier than before for analyzing their thinking or a small change of their behavior. And distinguish a comfortable status and uncomfortable status. We're going to learn that, so I will pass. And take notes of a sudden change of behavior. Uh, I, I said all people have their own habit, but so that's why we have to concentrate on their sudden change of behavior. We can get a lot of things from their sudden change. Uh, like when they, when they cross their legs suddenly, of course there is a meaning. And keep somebody in ignorance of observation. If someone noticed that, uh, someone staring at me for a long time, and then we will behave in a little bit different way. So we have to be careful. Here's the question. This is not 100 accurate, and there is always an exception. You cannot judge everyone by their behavioral language. And some behaviors are related to habits. Did you guys notice what I'm saying, what I want to say? No one? OK. All of these are related to our habits. That's why we need to take our time for observe, analyze someone's behavior. So uh, we need to find their habit first. We can get a lot of things from, uh, from someone's face because we have our own experience from our life. Maybe you guys already know how to read someone's expression. When someone opens uh, one's eyes slightly and meets one's brows, what do you think? What do you think? Yes. Uh, they're worried. Worried? Yes. Depending on the situation, but in this case, the person was worried or reflexive. Yes, exactly. Yeah. When we have a when we have an anxiety or when we're worrying about something, we tend to open our eyes slightly, like that, and it's a kind of negative posture. And when someone tilts one's head in front of you, it is really good for you. They might have feelings for you. They like you. Because if we don't like someone, we wouldn't tilt our head like that. It's really natural. So if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you have to watch that. You guys have to watch that. If someone touch their eyes with their hands, it means uh, they, they are regulating themselves. So if you see someone do like that, and then you can cheer them up, you can approach and you can cheer them up. If someone close their eyes for a few seconds while we are talking, it is a really negative, negative posture. Maybe they think it is not OK for me. So I want to change this situation. So you have to be careful when you see this gesture. When someone hides one's eyes with their hands, it means they, uh, when they hear a bad news, and they try to hide their eyes like that. Especially children. Adults don't do that. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but usually children do like that when they hear a bad news. And when we look sideways, it means I fall in love. Yes. Uh, actually, it means I can't believe you. But I saw you guys pupil before. Some of you guys look sideways, really. Kim, you, you look sideways. And you look sideways. It means I can't believe you. Believe, believe me, please. <laughs> Can you distinguish a real smile and a fake smile? Uh, if you think right one is real smile, please raise your hand. If you think left one is real smile, please raise your hand. Left one. Please, you guys have your hand. Please raise your hand. <laughs> Yes, if you think left side is real, real smile, please raise your hand. 
Yes, right. <laughs> yes, let's say this real, real smile. How can we distinguish that? We can distinguish it uh, from their wrinkle. If we look at her, her eyes, skins around her eyes becomes wrinkled, and her mouth, her, uh, her si each side of mouth goes up. So uh, it makes wrinkle around her mouth. So if you want to distinguish someone, someone left with really a uh, real smiley face or fake smiley face, you have to watch their wrinkle. But if someone has a wrinkle a lot, already a lot, and then it is really hard to distinguish. <laughs> And if someone bite lips like that, and you see handsome, right? Maybe they have worried about some situation. So you can ask for them. And if someone purse up their lips like that, uh, while you're mm -hmm. arguing with someone, probably they have an alternative idea in their head, and they can't agree this situation. So you can ask, you can ask their opinion, and they probably they they uh, they uh, express their opinion. If someone someone's nose becomes wrinkled, it is really bad gesture. Maybe they hate you, but it disappeared quickly. It disappeared quickly. So it is really, uh, it is not easy to catch it. But if you catch that, you have to avoid them. They, they hate you. But if someone stick out their chins or, or their nose goes up, it is really nice posture. Maybe they, they have uh, a confidence and they are proud of themselves. That's why they don't like that. And hands and arms. Someone tend to use their hands while they're speaking, especially me. If someone tie my hands, bind my hands, and then I can't say anything, I will be a mute. Because our hands express our, reflect our thinking and our emotion a lot. Someone, when someone clasp one's hand behind their back, it means I'm lonely. I, I want to be lonely. Don't approach me. So you had better not approach them if, if you see it like that. And when someone stand with uh, arms akimbo, uh, it means she is expressing her territories on her. But if she do like that, if she do that behavior, I can say I can't invade her territory because I like her. This is my idea type. <laughs> uh, if someone clasps one's hand behind their head, uh, it means I have a superiority complex and I'm very comfortable. He's in the stock company. He's, his stock might raise. I can guarantee. It. Actually, I'm like that. But, and if someone put their nose, uh, put their arms on the armchair, it means they want to be comfortable. So when we want to be comfortable, uh, we tend to, uh, we try to put our arms on, on the something. And point a finger. Are you happy? Are you happy? Yeah, really. Yes. Yeah. Actually, there is no meaning. Okay. But it means it is really, really rude gesture in the world. So you had better use your palm when you have to point someone like, like this. Uh, when we form spirally with our fingers like that, it is really, uh, it means I have a confident, confidence. Some scientists already proved it. This is the best way for expressing your confidence to, to like that. Yeah. And when someone lock their fingers together, uh, when do we do like that easily? Uh, 
I already inside. When do we do like that? Yes, right. Uh, when we when we reach something, we tend to lock our fingers like that. But it means why we wish? Because we have a worry. So that's why it means I have an anxiety and I'm worrying about something. If if we love love our hands a lot, and then it means maybe you guys can uh, you guys can know that already know that maybe you know that right? When we do like that. Okay. When we feel nervous, yeah, we we rub our hands a lot. So I rubbed my hands before I stand here at there. I rub my hands a lot because I was so so nervous. And legs. Okay. Don't look at her legs. Uh, if someone's foot is heading for the outside way or the door sideways, it means they want to go out. They really want to go out. So I'm talking with you guys with this direction of foot. So it means I want to I wanna run away. I don't want to do a lecture again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. And this is the same. When we shift our weight on our knees, it means I want to go out. I want to go out. We can find it from fighters. Some fighters do like that when when they want to rush it, right? Right? Did you see that? Yes. Some fighters do like that. So it means I want to go out. And when someone's toes pointed at the upper side, it is really positive gesture. I'm very happy and I'm very satisfying this situation about this situation. And if someone close cross one's legs like this, unless it is not their habit, it means I um, I I don't like this situation. I'm very uncomfortable. Yes. Please, on four of your legs. I think it's around your house. But there is, there is another perspective. When we do like that, I'm very happy. It means I'm very happy. But no one do like that. I didn't see before. But as a record, it means I'm very happy. And body, nice body, huh? If we lean our body towards, it means I have feelings for you. So he had he has feelings for me. Yeah, yeah you lean your back to me. But on the other hand, if we lean our uh, body backwards, it means I don't like you. So it is really good for your love life. So if someone curl their body on the chair like that. It is really bad gesture. Actually, it is uh, it is kind of expressing their territory, but not good in our society. If you do that um, in the TTC, and some strong black guy will kick you, kick you. It's joking. Sorry. <laughs> now, when we fold our arms like him, like him, he means I have closed mind. I put mine and I want to defend myself. Yes, someone can say no, but unless it is not their habit, yeah, it means I, I want to defend myself. <coughs> and when we shrug our shoulder, it means uh, when we don't know about anything, I mean, when we wonder about something, we tend to sh shrug our shoulder like that. Like this, maybe you guys see uh, so a lot. This, this, this gesture, right? So uh, we are gonna do how to check a good feeling or a bad feeling. 
Before we that, let's do a small activity. Uh, can we give a good feeling by just our gesture without, without saying anything? Uh, is there anyone who want to make a girlfriend or boyfriend? You? Maybe. Do I want to make a girlfriend? Come on, please. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Please come out. Can you sit here? Oh, just, uh, just a matter. Okay. Can you give a good feeling by your gesture without saying? Sure. Um, With casual talking. Oh, just casual talking? But just say anything? Yeah, just say anything okay. is okay. How are you doing today? Very good. It's very good as well. Great weather. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear about the, the hurricane? Yes. It was unfortunate that that happened then. It would be over soon. <laughs> yeah, I had trouble coming to work today on the TTC because of that. So, you know, yeah. Okay. What did you do? Um, what did I do? Yeah. I just, I felt awkward. Awkward? Yeah, because I'm being put on the spot, so. <laughs> okay. But, That's the fingers. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't show anything. He couldn't show anything. <laughs> he leaned. He leaned his body backwards. It is expressing for I don't like you. Actually, she expressed her feeling. Feeling for him. You leaned your your body. But, uh, Towards, so it means I like you. So, conversation. <laughs> okay, we have to know how to find, how to check a good feeling. First, we tend to work slowly because we want to spend more time with our partner. And second, we laugh frequently. You know, always happy. When we make a, when we meet a girlfriend, always happy. Everything is bright, so we tend to laugh a lot. And we pet our hair, especially the women, pet our hair, uh, pet their hair a lot. It is a kind of attraction for for men. Do you agree? Maybe you don't agree. Maybe you don't have a confidence for your hair. I can't think like that. And eye contact. Uh, when we like someone, when we have feelings for someone, uh, we uh, try to contact their eyes. So don't avoid my eye contact. Yes. Uh, because some people think if we like someone, we, we become become shy, so we try to avoid their eye contact. But believe me, if we, if we don't like someone, we don't try to contact our eyes forever. And listen, listen uh, courteously. Uh, when, we, when we have feelings for someone, uh, we try to listen carefully more. So we try to collect more information about them. Right? And reaction. When we like someone, we react. Uh, when they when they uh, make a bad humor, we try to laugh. It's really really awkward situation, but they try to react a lot for their behavior or or saying. And look at mirror very carefully. Maybe in women's for women's case, they tend to look their mirrors a lot when they like someone in front of you, right? Agree? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Agree. Because they want to check out their appearance very carefully, and they want to be they want to be good looking at 
them. Then what about bad spelling? First, <laughs> uh, when we don't like someone, we become become expressionless. When they say anything, we don't we don't uh, react. So and then uh, we become indifferent. It is really similar to before one. When we don't like, uh, it is really, we become indifferent. So we didn't do anything in front of them. And prepare for going out. Uh, when we are talking in, in a cafe, someone try to prepare, someone try to prepare for going out. It means they don't like this situation and they want to go out. That's why they try to tie their shoes or they try to wear an uh, out, out suit. Yeah, they do like that. And what's your clock? When we, when we don't like someone and we try to watch your, watch your clock a lot and uh, it is definitely I don't like you, it means. So, so yes, there is a possible that they are really busy, but usually it means I don't like you. So let's do an activity. This is a main activity for this class. I'm gonna give you a card. Uh, you have to behave these behaviors, these behaviors which you're writing here while you're talking. I'm gonna make you guys pair and you, you guys have to talking with your partner and analyze and try to analyze one's behavior and find out their thinking as much as you can while you're talking based on my lecture. And is it okay to exaggerate your behavior a little bit? So, uh, one, two, Okay. Uh, two, 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 and you and me. You're locked. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, you can't share, share that with your partner. Did I did I give B right? Yeah. Oh, you, you can you can share oh. you can share. Uh, did you did you get? Okay, your A and B. Okay. Let's do a casual talking and try to find their thinking as much as you can. Okay. For five minutes, let's do it. Let's talk for each other. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to you have to do this one in the paper and you have uh, hi. What's your name? Um, oh, you're, you're from Japan? Yes. Uh, I went to Japan for five times. Yes, yes I'm sure. I went to Osaka, Tokyo, Kyoto, uh, Osaka two times, uh, Hokkaido. A lot. Yeah. Uh, I really, really like Japan. <laughs> Uh, because, <laughs> because uh, I wanna, I really, really likes to eat sushi. Yes. 
So do you like sushi? Do you like Korean food? Do you like Korean food? Yes, yes you like. And do you like Korean culture? Yes. Is a kind of <laughs> Korean Korean entertainer or or Korean Korean food and Korean yes all thing about Korea. Yes. Three times, really? Where? <laughs> Busan and Seoul? Yeah, yeah, you said wow. I like Korean culture. Really? Oh, yeah. I like that. So, uh, you wanna you wanna visit Korea again? Sure. Yeah. Mm. I got maybe next year. Next year? Where? Uh, maybe uh, Hongdae, Gangnam, like that. Myeongdong or you don't know? You don't know? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Jeju, Jeju, Jeju. Where is that? Ah, Jeju, Jeju, I mean. Yes, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Jeju, I mean. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like I like Japan. So do you have many Korean friends? Do you have many Korean friends? Mm. So when did you? Uh, where did you met? In here? Mm. Yeah, I wanna meet more Japanese friends, but there's no chance. Hmm? I don't know. There's no chance. Uh, when I was in former school, IH, oh, yeah. IH there were many chance, <laughs> but not in here, there are no, no Japanese in, a, in my class. Yeah, so, I'm so sad. <laughs> yes, uh, are, you, are you doing this? Are you doing this? Yes. You're gonna, you're gonna stay here. You're gonna stay here more. Stay, stay in this school. You're not sure. Oh, okay. 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 Did you, did you get something from me? Yeah, I try to. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to lean my back towards to you. So, yes. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, excuse me, excuse me, guys. Uh, don't be clear, close or not. Okay, uh, did you guys get something? Did you guys get something from your partner? What, what did you get? Like it. And another? Always nervous. <laughs> yes. And uh, what did you get from Will?
uh, have to deal with that. And what did you do? Backward. Backward. Okay. Just that's it. I believe. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, when we when we when we see the behavior card type B and tilt tilt your head, it means. I have feelings for you. And second, clasp their hand behind their head. It means I I have priority complex and I'm very comfortable. And third uh, third one, cross their legs like this. I'm very happy. And for their arms, it's a little bit different. I have close mine. And five one, uh, five, lean your back then your body towards it means I like you so I want to approach you more and if you see type A type B, bite their lips it means very nervous I'm very nervous and rub their hands the same very very nervous and cross their legs like this I'm unco uncomfortable with you. And look sideways. I can't believe you. So and lean their body backwards. It means I don't like you. I want to be far from you. So uh, that's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to learn about linguistic psychology. And then we can be a master of psychology. So today we learn behavior psychology, and then tomorrow we're gonna linguistic psychology. So if you wanna guys, to, if you if you wanna guys be a master of psychology, please come and join tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>